Hello everyone. Thank you so much for that great introduction and it's wonderful to be here with our WCN family once again. Although I miss deeply seeing so many of you face to face, at least with the virtual approach, more of our team can be here to join us with today. So we'll start briefly at the beginning. I moved to Botswana in 2001 to work at Makalodi Nature Reserve in the south of the country. Here I cared for two beautiful cheetah brothers, Duma and Latotsi, who rapidly became my friends and my inspiration. As ambassador cheetahs, they met princes and presidents and inspired many to love the species. With this fabulous awareness-raising opportunity, I wanted to link up with wild cheetah organizations to make sure we were promoting their work on the ground. And I was surprised to learn that there was no concerted cheetah conservation efforts going on in the country at the time. And I realized here was a niche to be filled, not only for cheetahs, but for the Western Kalahari, where the highest densities of Botswana's approximately 2,000 cheetahs are found, as well as of other important threatened species, such as African wild dogs and lions. This vast area of wilderness in the southwest of Botswana is one of the least human impacted regions left on the planet today and it plays an essential role in wildlife connectivity for many wildlife species. As in this semi-arid environment, wildlife needs to move seasonally to follow available resources. The region links up the huge central Kalahari game reserve in the center of Botswana with the Khalakhari Transfrontier Park in the southwest, providing an opportunity for wildlife movement between these protected areas. However, despite its strategic location, linking wildlife populations across Southern Africa, more needed to happen for its conservation. Cheetah Conservation Botswana was created in 2003 to meet this need. We promote the coexistence of people and wildlife using a holistic array of activities, including scientific research, responsible livestock farming, community livelihood development, and environmental education. It's never been an easy undertaking, and we're often thrown unexpected challenges to keep us on our toes, including drought, fires, and floods. And of course, now we've added pandemic to the list. However, last year, our low human population density and strict government guidelines seem to be doing the trick to keep COVID-19 at bay. Then the Delta variant arrived, and all that has changed. Our cases were soaring by April, and now, since July, Botswana has one of the highest infection rates in the world. We have had to continually adapt our programs to meet the ongoing restrictions. But despite all the challenges surrounding us, we continue our important work, thanks to your support. Here to tell you more today, I'm joined by two of our field staff many of you will know our Hansi Camp Coordinator, Pale Max Sele, and our Education Officer, Khaubane Brits Malepe. Take it away, Max. Thank you, Rebecca. Hello, everyone at WCN. Uh, my name is Max. Behind me, you can appreciate the beauty of one of the best places, one of the wildernest places here in Botswana, the Western Kalahari uh, Desert. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we've had some challenges uh, because of the pandemic. Luckily, at Cheetah Conservation Botswana, we were not really impacted by the situation here in the Western Kalahari. Uh, our research team continue to uh, do the camera trap out of the protected areas in the Western Kalahari. Uh, they recently completed the seasonal camera trap study in the Hansi farm farmlands. Uh, recently, they collaborated with other carnival NGOs that brought in their data, which was recently published. The data shows that uh, our carnival uh, population countrywide is stable. Uh, human wildlife conflict uh, continues to be a challenge here in the Western Kalahari. Uh, even though we have this challenge, we continue to promote the use of uh, guiding dogs. Uh, 
our team is working with the farming community by placing uh, garden dogs with farmers here in the Hansi region. Uh, we get puppies from BPCSPCA uh, to give a chance to this uh, puppies, uh, a chance again to go and be guardians. We continue to work again with the farming community by working with small groups of farmers to avoid uh, COVID uh, infections by bringing them in small groups that will allow them to uh, continue to receive messages from us in order to address the issues of human wildlife conflict. It's been a challenging uh, time recently because we've lost uh, one of our team members uh, out in the communities. Uh, this person is no was well known countrywide. He was well known as the master trekker. He was known as Karoa, or commonly known as Pro. I personally uh, had a chance to work with Pro. Pro was a bushman trekker. Uh, through his skill, through his knowledge, his traditions, he will apply all this by uh, tracking down uh, an animal. He was well known for a documentary that he chased down a kudu for almost eight hours uh, through the use of uh, knowledge, through the use of trekking. Uh, and he, it was a great loss to, to us. Uh, he was ill for a long time Unfortunately, this time he couldn't take it anymore, and then he passed on. Uh, Karoe was a well-known uh, member from the community that he lived in. He was an inspiration to many of uh, the youth out there. We saw him working with many NGOs that will come to the Western Kalahari. Uh, and it wasn't only a loss to his family, but to the NGOs out there, uh, we, 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 we learned a lot from, from, from him. And it's a sad uh, moment for all of us. And uh, we want to thank him, you know, for the information that he was able to share with us while he was still uh, alive. Uh, by saying so, we continue to work with the community that Karua uh, came from. Uh, this is by uh, working with the uh, community to realize the importance of natural resources in their uh, protected uh, landscape. Uh, through this, I'll pass on to my colleague Brits, who will elaborate more about the program. Thank you. Thank you, Max. And thank you, WCN and our supporters all over the world that are watching this right now. I am here at Okwa River Valley, an ancestral river valley that used to carry water millions of years ago from Namibia into the central Kalahari. Now it is an area where wildlife passes through. When you are conducting the needs assessment with the, these Kalahari communities, one of their top development priorities was preserving their cultural knowledge. The Kalahari holds incredible cultural histories that are highly undocumented and verbal histories that are lost every time an elder like Karoa passes away. We are conducting natural and cultural resource reviews with the communities in these wildlife areas to document their own cultural treasures. These reviews will help the communities identify viable areas of development and potential businesses in things such as crafts and well products harvesting and processing, as well as tourism activities. 
but there is a looming threat posed by cattle farming. Although cattle farming can be done in a holistic and environmentally friendly way, a few Botswana are practicing these techniques. Farming extension will erode the last connected wilderness between Central Kalahari Game Reserve and Kalahari Transfrontier Park. A large south of land, such as the land that I'm standing on right now, has recently been approved to be degazetted from wildlife management area to fenced cattle ranches. CCB with other stakeholders have tried to review this change of land use. Now, the expansion plan for the agricultural zone has been paused but not stopped. It was in late May when a possible solution came to us in an unexpected way. A, bone, a smoking pipe made, of, made from bone was collected and delivered to the Department of Museum and National Monuments. The department was very excited about the discovery and is now planning to make assessments that would help them to determine whether the place is culturally significant. If, and if it is, this will facilitate the preservation of this unique wildness as a wildlife management area and securing it against farming development. We'll keep you posted on any news on this front. But as we move out ahead as an organization, we will continue supporting these communities in long term by providing skills that will help them minimize the incidence of human wildlife conflict in their areas as well as improving their wildlife management skills as well as come up with live, conservation livelihood projects that will help them see value in the wildlife that they share the wildness with. I will hand back to Rebecca. Thank you. Thank you, Max and Brits. It's wonderful to hear from you both. Our fabulous CCB team continues to work hard to conserve not only cheetahs and other carnivores, but the habitats they need to survive. Through supporting communities with diversified livelihoods focused on natural and cultural resources, not only can we create a self-perpetuating cycle of environmental conservation, but we strengthen development in communities, helping people emerge from the cycle of poverty and facilitate the conservation of this strategic wildlife area, the wildlife and the unique cultures found here. It's been through intricate connections we have made from emotional connections with families like Kurohas to connecting with government departments and key stakeholders that are helping us to conserve this important wildlife landscape for cheetahs, all wildlife and the indigenous cultures that coexist within the beautiful Kalahari. And it's thanks to you, our supporters around the world, and to WCN for bringing us together and creating this amazing global conservation team. It truly is a collective effort. Thank you for joining us to conserve cheetahs and their Kalahari home. Lea la boja tata. We thank you so much. <laughs>